How's it going, everybody? Welcome to We Do Tech on this pretty cold morning. Yes, first time actually wearing a beanie, but it, it's cold, so, so bear with me. But anyway, so today we're going to take a look at the MSI Mag B560 Tomahawk motherboard, which is actually currently one of the top of the range B560 boards that you can get on the market. Now, I'm not too crazy about the B560 platform and the entire 11th generation Intel CPUs. I think they're not necessarily the best but if you are in the market for a new intel 11th generation cpu and a b560 board then this is definitely the board that you would like to take a look at so now quickly take a look at our pricing of first the tomahawk here is currently retailing for under 220 dollars on amazon which is currently also around 40 dollars more than the amd b550 equivalent tomahawk board so you are paying a bit of a premium there but for here in south africa they're pretty much exactly the same same price ranging around a 4,500 grand pricing isn't just fixed it, it does uh, fluctuate quite a bit so just take a look at uh, the pricing of once you actually in the market for this board because it might actually go down we did see prices fluctuate again quite a, a bit Looking for a VPN, but want to pay a list and get even a more uh, features? Well, Surfshark is the VPN to get. I've been using them for more than a year now, and I'm definitely not disappointed. Surfshark has over 3,200 servers across the globe with a limited speed drops, unlike some others. Get all the standard advantages of a VPN, like no geo restrictions to access US and Netflix from different countries, no government restrictions on news, and get a better prices on flights games and software. Not only that, but Surfshark features industry-leading encryption, multi-hopping for a next-level privacy, a kill switch to prevent any personal info from being leaked, and one of my favorite features, unlimited devices. So you can use a single Surfshark account for the entire family and on every single device without the need to pay more. So follow my link up below to save 83% on a two-year plan with also three months absolutely free try it out and if you don't like it you also have a 30 day money back guarantee so go check out a surfshark vpn now at that price point you're also in the range of some of the higher end z590 or even z490 motherboards again depending on which generation of cpu you want to go for so there you're going to have to decide which side you want to go because again this is not an overclockable motherboard so the cpus are going to be a non-k cpu so it's going to be a decision that you'll have to make there so most likely you're, you're going to pair up this board with something like the 11700 again a non-k or maybe the 11 400 like k um, 400 um, yeah just 400 <laughs> And currently the 11, uh, 700 is retailing just below or around $300 and the 11400 is even lower than that. I think the 1100 is even cheaper than the board. So most likely you're not going to pair it up with uh, that one, but the 11700 might be a nice option if you're looking for a non-overclockable CPU to pair up with this uh, board. But again, then you can possibly go for the 11700K and uh, B uh, Z590 board. It's just going to depend up to what you want to actually use it for. But anyway, let's really take a look at the rest of the board and go over all of the features and so on, so you guys can make a decision on which board you want to get. Now, the design might not be necessarily for everybody, but I kind of like it. Just like the name implies, a Tomahawk, which is a missile, it has more of a military style look. Again, uh, also again, usually it's military great so there you go for that as well i don't think they actually branded it on the sport for this time but they did usually now the board does have a very nice large heat spreader here at the, the top you play have plenty of a gray accents for the heat spreaders uh, all around and all in all it just looks like a nice a board nice and neutral board nothing too flashy rg b wise so you do have that if you're not going to go too crazy but at least it does have some rg b ports which will go over now then again as for the cpu this is the lga 1200 socket so any 10th generation or 11th generation cpus will work on this board except some of the k cpus which which won't be able to overclock that's the only thing 
but now you do have your option to choose from but again i think that you're probably going to pair it up with something like the 11700 which might be a, a good uh, pair up now the only reason why i'm a bit skeptical about the b560 platform also the, the 11th generation cpus is that the only benefit that you really get is a pci express 4 and if you're more in going for budget orientated uh, builds, then that's not really going to be necessary for you. The advantages of PCI Express 4 for gaming isn't, isn't really uh, that uh, big, and I'd rather not pay more for that only. So this is where I'd rather go for something like the uh, 10th generation CPUs, again, because they're so close and pretty much somewhat even better than the 11th generation. Uh, you do pay a laser for the uh, for the CPU and then also you do have probably the option to go for something like the Z490 then in a state and you'll be able to get an overclockable CPU which will be just give you that extra performance for not too much or pretty much the exact same price so just just an option that you guys have but as for our vrm setup over here that might not necessarily be that big of a deal because you're not really going to overclock be or be able to overclock your cpu but you do have a very nice heat spreader all around which actually extends all the way to over your IO cover here, which is pretty nice. I haven't seen that, that too much yet. So temps shouldn't be a problem, especially again, because you can't overclock. But if you want to know a bit more about the uh, VRM setup, you can just check out the link in the description where I'll put in a spreadsheet going over all of the VRM setups and controllers and so on. But it is a 12 plus a two phase design, which does look to be a pretty decent. Now, it's not necessarily going to be the best one, but it's definitely going to be good enough for everything that you'll be using it for again, because you're not going to overclock. So um, no worries really there. Now, moving on towards our memory, you do have a four DDR4 DIMM slots with a max capacity of 128 gigabytes. And now you can actually overclock your memory going up to a maximum of 5,033 megahertz. So you do have that option now. Uh, also, unfortunately, you don't have any additional support inside the memory modules, which usually you do get some of the reinforcements like you do here at the bottom for the PCI Express slot. So just be careful when installing your memory, don't press too hard. Usually it's not a problem, but yeah, just keep that in mind, of course. Now moving on towards our PCI Express slots down here, you do have your two full-size PCI Express slots and then also your single 1X slot as well. Now, the biggest inclusion, again, of the B560 platform and the entire 11th generation range is that you do get PCI Express 4 now. So the top PCI Express, the top slot here is a PCI Express 4 a 16x slot. So you'll be able to get all of the additional bandwidth out of that. And not necessarily that that's going to get you better performance from your GPU. The performance increase there is so minimal, you're not going to be even to, able to notice that. As for the middle one here, this is only a four times the speed. So for some additional add-on cards, well, this one will work. And then again, lastly, is the 1X slot. And both of these are PCI Express 3 only. Just the top one, which is PCI Express 4. So just keep that in mind as well. Now, going for storage, you do have your two lonely SATA slots down here, and then an additional of four here on the side. But nobody cares about that because, again, this is PCI Express 4 territory now. And unfortunately, the top one, which is a PCI Express 4 M.2 slot, only works on 11th generation CPU. So if you are running, if you are going to run a 10th generation CPU, then this entire slot is going to be disabled, which is unfortunate. So you're going to lose an entire slot. So you'll definitely want to pair this board up with a 11th generation CPU and not a 10th generation. Uh, but yeah, we already went over all of that. So, so going off on with the rest of the M.2s, you do have the middle one here also with a nice heat spreader, but this one only runs on a SATA and if we do pair it up uh, with an M.2 your SATA 1 here on the side 
will be disabled so they do share a bandwidth and as for the bottom one without the heat desperator this one is a SATA and a PISA Express uh, slot so you'll be able to run your NVMEs here without a, a problem. Now I'll just quickly need to confirm whether the bottom M.2 does share bandwidth also with some of the other PISA Express uh, slots so I'll just let you guys know somewhere around here whether it uh, does uh, but usually they do kind of share bandwidth with some of the other PISA Express slots so just keep that in mind uh, also you do get a very uh, lonely piece of express a uh, power connector down here as well so if some of your cars are quite a bit hungry or you need additional power you do have this uh, slotted down here I'm not sure how many people actually use it, but you do have that option at least. Now moving towards I.O., you do have your four USB 2.0 ports for all of your additional peripherals. You do have a HDMI and also a display port. I'm not exactly sure on which versions they are, probably just ver uh, version two and also 1.2 or 1.4 possibly, but you do then uh, get a four USB 3.2 Gen 1 up port a 2.5 gigabit ethernet port which is nice and handy i'm glad to see that that's kind of turning into a standard nowadays and then also you do have your usb type c 3.2 gen 2 x 2 i believe which is a 20 gigabit a second port which is nice and handy as well you do have also your wi-fi 6e connection down here and also you do have a bluetooth which is nice and handy and then you just get all of your standard audio connect uh, connections your five audio ports and all your sp diff out uh, optical ports Oh yes, and it's nice that you do have your integrated I.O. cover, which is always handy. Now quickly going over the rest of the ports all over the board. Starting here at the top, you do have your CPU power, your 8 plus 4 pin, which is plenty enough power for your CPU. Here on the at the top, you do have your CPU fan PWM header, another PWM fan header here for your pump. You do have a nice 12 volt RGB header, a 5 volt addressable RGB header. You do have your easy debugging LED codes up here. So if something does go wrong with a boot, uh, you'll be able to kind of know what's what's wrong you do have your 24 pin motherboard power you do have a usb 3.2 uh, type a port and then a type c port on uh, this side here more to uh, the bottom you do have uh, two uh, pwm uh, fan headers you do have uh, your uh, other two sata ports you do have your usb 2 headers here as well you do actually have a thunderbolt header which is pti express down here as well so if you want to run a, a Thunderbolt card, you can. You do have your LED switch on the board. It's on its own. So you can turn that on and off if you, you wanted to. You do have a two additional PWM fan headers, another five volt addressable RGB header, a 12 volt uh, RGB header. And then finally, you do have a very lonely PWM fan header here on this side as well. So that's pretty much it for my look at the MSI MAG B560 Tomahawk motherboard. Actually a pretty decent motherboard if you want to pair it up with some of Intel's new 11th generation CPUs. Uh, the only ones that I would really pair it up with, again because it's a non-overclockable motherboard, is something like the 11700 or maybe even the 11900. It's going to be able to handle all of that power, especially if you want to go for the i9. I'm not too crazy about the high nines uh, on the 11th generation, but if you wanted to, you can pair it up with this board and I think it'll be a very nice fit for the non-K equivalents. Now, something to keep in mind is uh, that if you want to go for cheaper boards, uh, there is a problem where some of the boards um, aren't don't supply enough power for the CPUs. Hardware Unbox actually made a very nice uh, video going over that. It's usually just uh, the necessarily or regarding spec power delivery for the CPUs, which you can uh, bypass inside of the motherboards um, in, in, in the BIOS. So you'll be able to just handle all of that. But the board out of the box, uh, the Tomahawk doesn't have that a problem, which is very nice. Uh, especially, I believe most people won't want to fiddle around with the BIOS, they don't necessarily know everything that's going on there. So this is going to be 
perfect right off the box for no what no matter what cpu you're going to actually pair it up with so a very nice addition there so if you want to get a board which is going to handle everything you throw at it and then also not give you, going to give you any issues regarding thermals and power delivery then the tomok is going to be your base a bait or one of your base a baits for the b560 platform so a big shout out to msi for sending the board over a four hour video if you guys want to get it for yourself i will leave links in the video description if you guys enjoyed this video please like share subscribe and comment like always ring the bell notification all of that jazz and i will check all of you next time cheers guys